everybody and uh, welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's tutorial, uh, I wanted to just go quickly through how to generate cube maps in Space Engine. Uh, as it's got an inbuilt feature for this, as you can see over here, I'm just uh, right now I'm just moving my camera around and you can see Saturn and how it's being distorted with this feature, which is basically a cylindrical uh, sort of projection of what you of your camera and I want to show you a technique in order to extract these images and how to upscale them in order to be used in Unreal Engine as a cube map uh, especially if you've uh, if you've got if you follow the, one of my tutorials on how to set up a uh, actual cube map um, sort of setup for a material uh, for your skybox in Unreal Engine or if you've purchased one of my projects from the marketplace on ArtStation, Gumroad or Patreon in order to get that project yourself and just be able to use it straight away. Basically this provides an, inf an infinite amount of possibilities of what cube maps you can generate. They would look quite realistic in the sense that they would be from uh, generally from a, from, a, well, from a planetarium of the space engine program which is uh, pretty much uh, one to one like for like with how the universe uh, sort of looks like um, so yeah you know th these options in here I mean this is what this is what the perspective look would be like and you know it's totally different but then obviously when you switch over to the cylindrical projection within the tutorial well I will show you guys in the tutorial you'll be able to get much different uh, sort of effects. Uh, Space Engine is a very powerful software that I thoroughly enjoy and one day I hope to achieve in Unreal Engine to achieve the, sa achieve the same sort of fidelity of our um, sort of space um, space systems as they are presented in Space Engine. And as you can see, this engine is incredibly powerful, right? And you know, even in here, you could potentially go to a cylindrical sort of uh, render and now you can see how that would look like as an HDRI. But let's not waste any more time. Let's begin the tutorial. If you guys want to support me, please consider going on my Patreon page uh, to become a Patreon, uh, receive mentorship on there, join the Discord server, like and subscribe to the video, and please consider buying me a coffee on our station or Gumroad um, if you want to buy one of these projects, generally the price of coffee. So let's not waste any more time. Let's begin. Okay. Now we're finding ourselves in uh, Space Engine and this is where the pillars of creation are. It's not exactly looking, uh, you know, like what you're seeing somewhere in, in, in screenshots necessarily, but it is, I mean, those are there. You've got to, you've sort of got to like find the right shot in order to get them correctly, but we're not here to, to do that. This is specifically, I've just chosen an area where there's like a volumetric sort of thing going on. But actually, if I think about it, the I think one of the best places to go to uh, would be, uh, let me just type in, actually, I can't find this way. So if I type in nursery, it won't work. But if I go in here, I'm sure I'll be able to find the, uh, the nursery. So let me just, yeah, still a nursery right there. I'm just gonna go to it and this is it this is the stellar nursery so you can see this is volumetric it's actually going to have an impact on performance but um, i want to show you guys how you can create a cube map in um, in space engine quite easily because it's got an inbuilt function for this so over in here you've got an option called display or you can just go into settings and you'll be able to find it and what you're seeing here is it's got the resolution the full screen window resolution but it also has this area here where it says perspective, fisheye, cylindrical, or cube map. Now, the cube map is useful as well. Uh, for example, if you want to project this onto, well, as it's implied, a cube, but what we want to do instead is do uh, an HDRI, so we're going to use cylindrical, okay? Now, this is cylindrical projection, and as you can see, you can see what it's doing, so I can get closer and I'll be able to see it even, even more. But, you know, for example, like this, it will it will it will make everything sort of stretch at the poles. So when you put this on a skybox in Unreal Engine, uh, like on in the project that I've created, then this will look quite OK. Now, one other problem that we've got here is its actual resolution. So what we need to do is we've got the full screen resolution. We've got a custom display resolution. So what I would say, I would go over here and then uh, find the largest resolution that it allows you to set. 
So in this particular case, if I look here, it's a 3840 by 2160, but that's not, you know, it's not exactly the proper resolution. Normally you'd want to go like on a 6K sort of thing with this. So um, if you really want a large resolution, but then can your computer actually take it to that level? That's another question. Okay, so um, it's very, as I said, the resolution needs to be as high as you can possibly get it. Again, for a cube map, you'd want something like 12K or 16K, but you can't really do that in here. It will only allow you to go to a 3840 by 2160. If you do, however, have a have a bigger monitor, it will sort of allow you to go further than that. But, you know, that's only if you have a bigger monitor. But right now, we're pretty much limited to what the monitor can display. So, um, one thing to note is that the moment you change this resolution, your DPI or your interface is just not going to work out very well. So I would advise going in general and uh, selecting use system DPI and maybe potentially also increasing this to about, well, I don't know, something like 135 before you commit to the resolution change. Uh, one thing to really note is that when you change the resolution in Space Engine, it also changes the resolution of your monitor, which is a bit of a bummer because this is also affecting OBS, but if for me for recording, but I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'll go back into my display and then with full screen custom resolution, I'm going to select 3840 by 2160 and I'm going to press apply. Once I've done that, um, you know, obviously because I've done because I've, I've selected the DPI the way I wanted it, it's still OK. The interface is still OK. Uh, let's just make sure we're in cylindrical mode. So we're seeing it this way. Now, obviously, you're already on the screen. You're, you're, you're not seeing what I'm seeing because OBS got a bit of affected. So I'm just literally uh, fixing my OBS right now because um, Obviously, I've, um, I'm just trying to, well, one second, uh, just trying to fix it right now. Uh, where is it now? Have I not got like a, yeah, a transform fit to screen. There we go. So now it's fixed. But just because the resolution of OBS pretty much changed, well, it seems I'm getting some really some strange artifacting going on for some reason. When I've said to uh fit to screen uh let me just try and see why won't this work it's very odd um okay there we go so it should be yeah okay so now it's working properly okay right so i'm at this resolution and i've got this scene okay so let's say i want to get this out uh maybe maybe do a bit more maybe maybe do something like this okay so this is what this is the hdri that i want to get out i can close this window now and i've got this option in here obviously you can play around with the settings you can brighten it or make it darker or you can play with all the sorts of the visual flares of this so you're just gonna have to learn what all these options sort of do in order to be able to you know get some other effects like for example disabling some stars or whatever or anything like that right maybe you want to increase the sharpness or decrease it so you've got some options in the visual style you know like where you can play around with this you've got more saturation less saturation there's all sorts of things that you can do in here to really get different kind of effects for the skybox but i'm going to press this button over here which has taken a screenshot and has now opened a folder Wait one second, that's not the folder. This is the folder and has generated the skybox and it's right over here. This is the skybox. Um, and now we can use this skybox to put it in Unreal Engine. But as I've said, the quality of this. So if I go into properties for it, you'll notice that it's uh, it's actually a 3840 by 2160 image, which will not result in very good looking results in Unreal Engine. But let's try and fix that with a bit of uh, upscale magic. Okay, I've got um, Photoshop here uh, and I've opened this image. Now, uh, obviously everything is very small. If I go back into Space Engine, um, I can actually go into settings over to my display and just set the resolution back to nine, uh, well, 920 by 1080, but I'm trying to find the 60 FPS version of that uh, can't really. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to press apply. And obviously um, this should be back. OK, so now I'm at, uh, now I'm back at the normal resolution. 
I am just going to go back into Photoshop. So this is Photoshop at the normal resolution. Um, okay. So in Photoshop, what you need to do in order to upscale, we'll go to edit to preferences uh, and then to technology previews. And in there, make sure you've got enable preserve details, the de uh, pre enable preserve details 2.0 upscale. This is in all the versions of, of Photoshop from 2018, I believe, uh, and onwards of 2019. But there are other software out there like Gigapixel uh, that you can use to upscale. Uh, you can also upscale online if you want to. There are free services that you can find to do this. I'm just going to use Photoshop. So that is active. I'm just going to go into image and I've got an image size option in here. And you can see that I'm using percent. So it says to me 100% uh, this is the image size. Now, what I can do now is to the resample, I'm going to select Reserve Details 2.0. Uh, I'm going to maybe reduce the noise to about 13 or something like that. But you can see in the preview in here if the reduced noise is doing anything or not. Um, and in your case, it might not do anything. But right now, you're not really seeing any, any anything because I haven't yet increased the size. So if I go to 150, you know, you'll be able to see this slide that is still not really doing much. Um, but 150 mean, means this resolution. So let's just try a 300%, which is kind of what I want. Um, so again, now the, the reduced noise is starting to do something. So you can see no noise reduction and then a lot of noise reduction will just blur the image. So I'm just going to use a very minimal amount and I'm going to press OK. So now Photoshop is obviously upscaling it and it has been upscaled uh, quite a bit. And let's, is, let's just go to 100%. Is that 100% sort of, um, this is what it looks like 100%. Um, sort of um, a zoom, but I'm just going to leave it like that and just see what comes out. I do need to save it, uh, so let me just press Control S. Obviously, a large file. This is saving it as a JPEG. That's fine. I'm just going to press OK, and the, the tech, you know, the image where I had it has now been upscaled uh, to that resolution. Um, now, what I can do is I can go to. Let me just open. I'm just going to type in on Google, convert PNG to HDR. It doesn't matter, but this website called Convertio, you can open that. And then in Convertio, if you bring the image, so um, this is the this is the photo that I've got. This is the image. I'm just going to drop it in here and you'll see it already detected that there's a JPEG. And I can select it to convert it to an HDR, press the convert button. After this is done, I'll be able to download it and then um, use it in an Unreal Engine, in my Unreal Engine project as an HDR file. And ju we'll just see how the quality looks like. I'm not going to say that this is going to be on par with some of the stuff that I normally make because it's just not, you know, we've upscaled a lot of the detail. Normally, I, I do 12K textures out of the bat. Uh, if you guys find another way to export out of Space Engine at higher resolutions, please let me know. But right now, um, this is this is sort of the method that I've got to do this. And we're now in uh, Unreal Engine 5. I've got one of my, uh, the project here with a custom skybox. Um, so I've opened the, uh, the material. And what I'm going to do, this is the color that I need to change. Uh, in the content browser, I brought the texture over. So I can drop it in here. And this has now replaced the that uh, skybox with this new one. And this is the one that we've exported out of Space Engine. Now I'm going to have a look here at the power, maybe put it at 1.2, make it a bit darker. And then I'm going to take this, well, I'm going to double click the texture that I've load that I've uploaded. This is from Sky, the, this is from the um, uh, Space Engine. And I'm going to make sure in the MIP gen settings, I'm going to sell, I'm going to have no MIP maps. Just make sure that's done. So it's it normally will be from texture group, but that will make the texture look a bit less good. So if I switch that to, from texture group, the quality here will have decreased in sharpness. So with no MIP maps, they will look uh, better. Uh, I'm just going to make sure also to uh, take the intensity of my stars, uh, which which is, you know, generated by an additional texture of stars. I'm going to put that to zero. So those stars disappear. And the only star that we have show being shown 
are the uh, the stars from the skybox. Now, if I go into the post process volume and the, disable that, we can see it a bit better now. This is the skybox that we, the cube map that we got from Space Engine. Uh, obviously, this looks this doesn't look as good as the previous skybox that we had, but because that was um, at uh, 12 real 12k, well, this is an upscale version. So, out of Space Engine, I would take the texture out without these uh, without these stars. I would just disable those and only take my nebulas and stuff like that uh, specifically, and then just use the material generated stars from within Unreal Engine to um here to, to populate the scene with stars and i think that will be far better but overall this is a very neat way of getting cube maps and you can go in space engine anywhere you want and generate a cube map like this so around anything really and then you can generate a cube map with the method that i've shown you it's a very cheap way of doing it and then using uh, my project files or you know following the tutorial on how to gen how to create it uh, you can then use your own custom um, HDRI cube maps within Unreal Engine. And basically it's unlimited. Like you can go in Space Engine anywhere you want and generate thousands of cube maps and then bring them into Unreal Engine. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it, I would say. But I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I know I've enjoyed pretty much coming up with some of these things. Um, it's quite incredible what we can achieve with just a few little softwares here and there. Um, I mean, everybody can have their pretty much their dream come true of flying through space. So I hope you, I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Please consider supporting me. As I've said on Patreon, YouTube membership, YouTube like, comment and subscribe. Art Station, Gumroad, whichever you may want. Uh, I would like to thank my uh, current Patreons. They are they are massive supporters to the development of my space projects. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy.